Right, so many of you were demanding a video on conductometric titrations. Now I can guarantee you the fact that this video is going to be very helpful to you. No doubt there are other you know, uh, sources of uh, learning about conductometric titrations. But this one, uh, I, I can tell you that I'll be giving you certain questions as well on how the, how the examiner mind works or what kind of conceptual questions he can give you from conductometric, he or she can give you from conductometric titrations, right? So just let's just get into this and uh, just pay attention. It's a very easy topic. Once you understand it, again, you would never have to revise or, you know, uh, you don't have to mug up the topic again, right? So what is basically conductometric titrations? It basically measures the conductance of the solution. Now, just about 30-40 seconds of theory that I want to discuss is basically in conductometric titrations, like I have discussed in my acid-based numericals as well, uh, you have a burette, right? Let's say you have a burette and to this burette, whatever you are having is called your titrant, right? And then we have, let's say, a conical flask. And in this conical flask, whatever solution you are having is known as a titrant or your analyte. Analyte because you are analyzing it. It's called the analyte because you are analyzing it. So it's called a titrant or an analyte, right? And then in your burette you have a titrant. Now, what is the utility? Uh, this is actually very important and I'll tell you why it is important. Because this is where your concept building starts. Uh, and we measure the conductance of this analyte with the help of an instrument which is known as a conductometer. So with the help of a conductometer, we measure the conductance of this particular solution to, to find out the end point or the equivalence point or whatever uh, you know uh, things we need to understand and it has a lot of applicability conductometry because uh, if you want to measure the purity of water you know when you are going to rivers and lakes to, to do checks the purity of water is measured with the help of conductometry similarly when you go to oceans to check the salinity of the sea water you again Use the make use of conductometry. So conductometry has a wide variety of applications, and that is why many many a lot of questions are definitely you know going to be asked to you in in uh, in the coming exams from conductometry, right? Anyway, so now let's just move on to the basic curves that we need to discuss in your conductometric titrations. Uh, so the first one is your basic uh, strong acid which are represented by SA versus strong base, right? So we can take example of HCl and along with that we can take NaOH. So strong acid versus strong base. Uh, what happens is basically, uh, there's, there's still a lot of theory left in this particular uh, uh, in this particular topic, which I'll discuss with the examples itself. So what you need to know as of now is uh, H plus, Okay, the conductance of a solution depends on the mobility of its ions, right? And H plus is known to have the highest mobility of any ion. H plus has a mobility of around 250. Okay, it has a mobility of around 250. Uh, any sodium, uh, as an example, I'll take sodium plus, sodium cation has the mobility of 43 only. So as compared to H plus, H plus has five times, almost five times the mobility of sodium. And OH also has a very good mobility, but it is slightly less than H+. plus. H plus has around 250, so you can say OH has around, let's say, 210 or something like that, right? So it is comparable, but not as much as H+. plus. OH- minus never is also having a very, very good conductivity. So these are the few basic things you need to know. Now, on the y-axis, we measure the conductance of the solution, okay? Or conductance of the analyte. That is the particular solution that is there in the conical flask. That is what we are measuring. We are measuring the conductance of the analyte, right? Or whatever solution is there in the beaker or whatever whatever thing you are using, right? And on the x-axis, we have volume of titrant. Volume of titrant. Now, this is where the concept, your concept building will start. The, on the x, generally, whenever someone teaches you, they say volume of base. That is not the answer. The answer is volume of titrant, that is whatever solution is there in the burette. It could be a base, it could be the acid. What your conductance you could be measuring of a base or acid, you do not know. So it has to be mentioned whether you are measuring the conductance of the acid or the base. Similarly over here it should be mentioned that what you are adding from the burette, whether it's the acid or a base. In general cases, yes, you always add base. But if, if I'm an examiner and I'm thinking from an examination point of view, sometimes I can give you volume of titrant and acid. And you will plot the graph of uh, 
acidosis base your, where your base is being added from the titrant and here they have set the volume of titrant and in brackets they will write acid and you will do it incorrectly so this is where you have to understand the concept behind the topic right so if I show you the conductance so let's say we are taking volume of titrant that is we are taking base so we have base in the burette and in the conical flask we have our acid so we are measuring the conductance of the acid once we are titrating the titrate, uh, titrating it with the help of a base so earlier we have lot of H plus ions HCl almost completely uh, ionizes or dissociates into H plus and Cl minus so the conductance is very very high so we will start from a very high point of, point of conductance and gradually it starts falling down starts falling down starts falling down why is it falling down? Because once you are titrating it with NaOH, so if I write on the reaction, HCl plus NaOH, right, gives you NaCl plus H2. This is what is going to happen. It's a neutralization reaction. Uh, so your H, H plus is combining with OH minus, right? If I draw this, your H plus is combining with, the, with your, the, these are the ions that are there in the solution, right? Once you are adding your base, these are the ions that are there in the solution. So once you are adding OH- minus and H+, plus, they both are combining to form water. And the Cl- minus and Na+, plus are also combining to form sodium NaCl. Now the conductance decreases, decreases, decreases. It decreases up to a particular point. And then once the complete neutralization takes place, that means all of the OH and H+, plus have combined. All the H+, plus, which was dissociated by HCl, has been neutralized with the help of OH-. Minus, and then also we keep on adding the base then suddenly the, there will be an increase in the concentration of OH- minus. now once you keep adding base the OH- minus concentration will increase and because of the increase in the OH- minus concentration the conductance will again increase ok I will just draw this graph again so that you have one clarity right uh, so if you see this graph this is not a perfect V you see this 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 graph that is uh, when once the H plus is getting neutralized is very very steep the fall in conductance is very steep whereas once you add OH minus the increase in conductance is not as much as there was a decrease in H plus and the reason is basically based on mobility because H plus has a very very high mobility so once the H plus starts getting neutralized the conductance immediately falls uh, at a very quick rate but once all of the H plus has been neutralized by the base and then we are, add, we are adding more of base and the OH minus concentration is increasing no doubt that OH minus is mobile but OH minus is not as mobile as H plus that is why it will not be the increase in conductance will not be as steep as the fall in the concentration of H plus so that is why you will see it as not a perfect V right and even if you see at this point at this particular point there is some conductance at this equivalence point this is your equivalence point V equivalent this is your equivalence point and at the equivalence point also you will see some kind of conductance that is happening now why is this conductance taking place this conductance is taking place because of your sodium ions no doubt all the H plus and OH minus have been neutralized and there are no H plus and OH minus in the solution but still you have sodium plus ions in the solution NaCl is formed right so Na plus and Cl minus is there so you have some kind of ions which are mobile they are not as mobile as H plus that is why the conductance is low but the conductance will not go to zero in a strong acid versus strong base titration because you have sodium ions and sodium ions also have some kind of mobility which is around 43 so they are also going to produce some kind of conductance so that is why the conductance will not fall to zero right so this is a detailed explanation of your strong acid versus strong base now why I was stressing on the fact that the volume of tri titrant is important because here I had taken base so earlier you had acid the acid was getting neutralized and then the base concentration was increasing what if I over here if I take the volume of titrant that is in the burette I take your acid so now what I am doing is in your burette I am taking the acid now if in the burette I take the acid then something completely different happens this graph will invert invert not invert I mean, if I am if I am analyzing the base, that is now the solution. The analyte is our base solution, and we are adding acid from the burette. So now, what is going to happen is first the OH minus concentration is going to decrease. So now the OH minus concentration is going to decrease like this, and it will not be as 
I mean the fall in the OH minus concentration will not be as much because the conductance of OH minus is not as great as H plus. So we are adding acid and the OH minus is getting neutralized gradually, gradually, gradually until all of the OH minus has been neutralized. And then we are we keep on adding acid, acid. So now once we keep on adding acid, let's say HCl, we keep on adding after even after neutralization, then there will be an increase in conductance. And this increase in conductance will be very sharp. This increase in conductance is going to be very, very sharp. So now the graph has inverted. Now this is this 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 slope is less and this increase in conductance is more because now your H plus you are adding from the burette. So first the H plus neutralizes all the OH minus and then once you keep on adding your acid then it suddenly shoots up because the conductance shoots up because now H plus ion concentrations are increasing. So this graph is different than the graph where you are adding base from the uh, from the uh, burette. So if you are adding acid from the burette, the graph will look like this. But if you are adding base from the burette, then the graph will look like the one which I had drawn previously. So this is actually the very important conceptual things that you need to understand from your conductometric titrations. So this is a brief overview of your conductometric titrations. And uh, I am a little short of time, sorry for that. So and uh, you know, like you know my capacity of my camera is also very very less. So what I'll do is, um, I'll definitely make a, a more detailed video because if I hurry up, you would not be able to understand the concept properly. But this is this is what I wanted to, uh, you know, this is, this is the way to actually uh, study conductometric titrations. You have to understand each and every topic in detail, uh, in uh, each and every concept, so that you know next time onwards you do not you no, you do not have to uh, again and again go back to this video. I know concepts are uh, built up. I mean, I could also make a 10 minute video, just, you know, draw the graphs of a strong acid versus strong base, weak acid versus weak base. You know, there are five graphs in total, which are important important in conductometric titrations. So I have taken the first one, the rest four I'll explain in my next video, right? So, uh, I mean, if I make a 10 minute, 12 minute video discussing all the graphs, just how to draw the graphs. You know, if the examiner is smart, he would he would give you some kind of changes in the in the in the you know in some kind of it could be any change he could have thought of. So if you know the concept well, you can actually uh, you know understand each and every change, and you could you could answer accordingly, right? So I hope you like this video. Please do like, subscribe, and share my channel. Uh, right? Thank you.